Okay. So we did finish chapter four, lab four, right? So let us see when the lab is due. So for that, you have to go to your lab section and click on upload lab assignment. Okay. So assignment three is, it was due on nine, uh, the previous Thursday and lab four will be due on Thursday, September 30th. Okay. Uh, however, you are still allowed to submit your assignment till October 7th, but there'll be a 10% penalty. Sorry. Okay. So let's go to lab manuals and chapter five. Okay, so it is about discrete probability distribution. Now, what do you mean by discrete? Discrete is nothing but a numbers which you cannot, which you can count, finite number. Okay, so the probability of which will have a finite number is called as discrete probabilities. Fine. Okay. Now, uh, if a probability distribution, it has to satisfy two main requirements. That is, when you add the probability of all, that means the total probability must be equal to one, it should not exceed one, and it has to be between zero and one. So now, why do you think the range of probability is only between zero and one? Why not two, three? Why not uh, negative numbers? So, whenever you are finding a probability of something, the total outcome, the sum of total outcome is one. And if you are dividing a smaller number by a total number, that is the maximum number, the value, the result will never exceed one, okay? For example, say the probability is two by three. That means three is the total number, two is the favorable outcome, number of ways is two. Now let's see whether it, is, it exceeds one or not. Okay, now it is two divided by three, which is 0. 0.6, okay? Now let us take 2.9 which is very close to three, divide by three. It will not exceed one, okay? It will be less than one. And that is why the range of probability is less than one, greater than zero. Now, tell me some examples where the probability is zero. Okay, so today is Tuesday, right? Now, what, are, what is the probability that tomorrow is Saturday? Zero, right? Tomorrow cannot be Saturday. So that is one example. Now, give me an example for, say, probability is equal to one. It has to be equal to one, not less than that. Exactly. Take the same example. If today is Tuesday, the probability that tomorrow is Wednesday is one, definite, definitely possible, right? So those are some examples, and that is why the range of probability is between zero to one. It cannot exceed one, and it cannot be a negative numbers, okay? So for a probability distribution, these two are the main requirements, okay? Now, let us straight Go to the assignment question. Now there is only one question, okay? There is only one problem to do, but there are two methods. So you have to get a similar value or maybe a different value, that's not a problem but you will be using two methods and calculating the probability. That is 
theoretical probability and a simulation probability, okay. In method 1, you will be calculating a theoretical probability. In method 2, you will be calculating the simulation probability. And you all know how to do the simulation, right? That is what we did in the lab 4. Adding rows and choosing some random numbers and then calculating the probability of that, okay? Now, so let's see the question now. Okay, so there is a jury, 10 person jury, okay? So in that, eight people belong to Caucasians and two are African American. So according to the percentage, this is correct. I think this is 50 and 50. I'm not sure whether there's a typo in the problem uh, in the chapter five. Let's see the upload lab assignment. Oh, assignment five has not been assigned. Okay, so I guess this is 50% and 50%, okay? So, but I'm not sure, I guess it is 50 and 50. So we will check that in the next class when we get, when, when we can see the link, okay? Now, so according to this, there are 10 people out of which a, a two are African Americans and eight belong to Caucasians. Now, there is a claim that since there are only two people, who belong to African American, they are, they are saying that there is a racial bias because when you uh, find, uh, when there is a community with 10 people, then it has to be 50% chance for both of them. So it has to be five from both the sides, right? Five from each. But as you can see here, the numbers vary. So that is why they are saying that there is a racial bias. However, the prosecutor claims that this is not done deliberately. So they are saying that this happened by chance. It is not done deliberately. Now, what, what is our job? We are supposed to find the probability of selecting two or less than that African American. So we have to check what is the prob probability that it will happen by chance. Okay, and then you can answer the questions given here. Questions you need to answer is here. So we will be doing method one and method two. So there is nothing much to do for you. Just do along with me, okay? So whatever you have to do is answer these questions in a word file, okay? Now, open JMP. Do you have a question? Okay. Now, do not open any subset. We are going to create a data table. So, go to File, New, Data Table. Do not open any subset or any data file, GMP files. Create a new data table. Okay, go to file, new and data table. Okay, so once this is done, so method one is calculating the theoretical probability, which is nothing but you will have two columns. One is X values, the data values, and you have to find the probability of those values, two columns, okay? So X values are nothing but number of people, which is 10, and we are supposed to find the probability of each person. So let's see how to do that. Now let's rename this column to say X, or number of people, whatever. Rename it as X. Now I'm going to apply some 
numbers to this okay for that go to initialize data rename and then one more step is go to initialize data you all can see that right and sequence data you are not choosing random sequence data okay click on sequence data now what are the total number of peoples it is 10 so they are starting from 0 start from 0 and end at 10 0 to 10 step will be 1 I will tell you what are these okay so once you are done with that just click on ok done now you get a value from 0 to 10 so why I did this is because now there is one more way to do this just renaming the column uh, don't do this but I'm just telling you okay now I can easily type it as one two three what if I have 100 people you cannot keep on typing right and remember these are not the random numbers it has to be in an order it has to be in a sequence and that is why we chose And that is why we chose sequence data here from 0 to 10 with a step of 1, like 1, 2, 3, 4, with a step of 1. Okay, and rename it as x. Now, next column, how, how, how to get this next column? Just place your cursor in the next empty space and double click. Okay, just double click on the next empty space. Then double click. Now we have to find a probability, right? So double click on that, rename it as probability of x, which is p of x. Okay, probability of x. And that's all. You're not going to enter anything here. So just click on OK. Once you rename that, click on OK. Now your next step is to, is to be capital P. So next, uh, next task is to apply the formula for this. Okay, so to apply the formula, right click, right click on the P of X and choose formula right click on the p of x and choose formula okay now tell me which formula i should be using from this which do you think i must be using discrete probability you can easily answer that why not random Because our data values are not random, right? It is in sequence. So it cannot be random. Now, go to discrete probability and choose binomial distribution. Okay. Discrete probability and binomial distribution. Now, here, Probability will be 0.5, which, which is 50%. The question was supposed to be 50% this and 50% that. So P equal to 0.5, enter. P equal to 0.5. What is N? Any guess? 10, because number of people are 10. What will be K? Just take a guess. What do you think K must be? What are we finding? We are finding the probability of X, right? Now, we we gave, we gave we are telling JMP that this is P, this is 10, N equal to 10, but it has to know 
for which it has to calculate the probability. So k must be x. Okay. So do not type it as x. Just click on that and you have to choose x here. Done. That's it. 0.5, 10 and x. Probability of x. Okay. Now click on apply. Okay. Now I told you that probability values must be between 0 to 1. So if you check this column, no matter what is the values are, the probability is definitely 0 to 1, right? It is not exceeding 1. So the final value is 1. Okay. So once you get this, go to your word file. That's your method 1. This is like a template. Just put your name, section, eight. This is assignment five. Now, let me paste some part of the question here. Just copy this or you can just type it. Method 1, calculating the theoretical probability. Okay. Just write your name, section, TA name, date. Assignment 5, method 1. Now, here you are supposed to paste this. Okay. So, how can you do this? You can just take a screenshot of this, crop it, and paste it. Or else you can, since you are all using Windows, go to Start menu, just type it as SNI. You will get a tool. Okay. Enter. Now, Click on new here. Once you get this tool, click on new. You must get like, like this, a blur picture, okay? Now start from the corner and drag it. Start from the corner and drag it, okay? Once you do this, right click, copy. Um, what do you mean? How, how, how did I select choose X? So did you create X column there? Yes. So what is the name of the column X? Yeah. Okay. Copy this. Go back to your word file and paste it. Do not minimize too much, okay? That's it. That's your method one. Now, go back to your question. Using this tool? Or are, are you done till here? No. Okay, so just right click on the picture. Next is method two, go back to your word file, just copy this question and let us do method two here. Done till here, if you're completed, then we can start.
Okay. Now go to your JMP. This is done, right? Do not close, but just minimize this and go to file again. Go to file, create another data table for the method two simulations. Go to file, new data table. File, new data table, done. Okay, now here we are doing simulations. So let me rename this as simulation. Okay, click on okay. Now, when you are doing simulations, you can take a large number of data set, right? Simulation number or row number. So let us take around 1000. So that 1000 would be fine because there are only 10 people. So 1000 is large enough. Okay, so for this, just double click on this, on the empty space here, double click you have to get this or else I guess you can right click on this and go to our address. You can do in that way also. So double click and enter it as thousand. Done. Okay, now here we are supposed to write a formula, give a formula to the JMP. So go to right click on that simulation and click on formula. We are supposed to enter a formula there. Now, for a simulation, do we have to choose a random numbers or are we supposed to give a sequential data? Random, right? Whenever you are doing a simulation, you are supposed to give a random numbers. So for that, go to random, and random binomial, random, random binomial. Random binomial, okay? Once you choose that, you're supposed to enter two values, the n value and the probability. Now we know that p value is 50%, which is 0.5. What is n? n is? So here we are supposed to enter it as click on apply and OK. I guess this is not thousand. Double click on the simulation column, edit formula. Double click on the simulation column, edit formula. It is not thousand. It has to be 10. Because we are simulating for 10 people. So even though the number of rows is thousand, we are simulating for 10 people. So it has to be 10. Yes, click apply and then OK. Change in the formula. It is not a thousand, it has to be 10. And again, click OK. Right, right. Right, now this is for a total number. Now, if you want to calculate for each person for one, two, three, four, five, six, like that, then we will create a, another column. This is optional, but uh, it will be better 
to identify the data. Now let me rename it as simulation probability. Okay, click on OK. Now let us apply the formula, right click, formula. Okay. Now you're not supposed to choose anything. This is just that I'm converting this to actual numbers. Now we all know that probability formula is number of ways or favorable outcomes divided by total number of outcomes. So the total number here is 1000, right? Total number for the simulation method is 1000 and it has to be divided by the number of outcomes. So simulation are called as favorable outcomes. So click on the simulation, okay, divide it. You will have the division symbol on the top. On the top, you will find this division symbol, okay? Choose that, divide it by total number of outcomes, which is 1000, enter it as 1000. Okay, enter it as 1000, apply, okay, that's it. It is the same thing, but we are converting it to actual probability. Okay, now this is done. There is only one more step. Now you cannot paste the whole thing to your Word document, so let us tabulate it. So we need for each uh, person, right? For number one, number two, number three person. So we will tabulate that. For that, go to analyze, to tabulate, analyze, tabulate. Then analyze, tabulate. Now here, Click on simulation and drop that down here. Just a second. Give me a moment. Okay, so once you click on the tablet, go to analyze tablet. Now you have to choose. So for the grouping, let us choose simulation. Okay, click on simulation. You want to make this bigger? Do you want the table to be bigger? Hmm? Okay, so just double click on that. Okay, next you will pass this here, simulation for the column zone. Right click on that and choose as use as grouping column. Click on use as grouping column. Okay, so this will give you the probability of all the nine people. Fine. Now you are supposed to copy and paste only this column. So we did this only because we cannot paste the whole thousand. So only for that, 
I'm creating a table so that I can summarize everything into one. So to select this, you will, you will see a three dots on the top, three dots on the top. Just close this black pop-up window, close this one. You will see a three dots there. On the top, click on three dots and you will see a plus icon plus icon click on that plus icon click on that and you can you can click choose as i mean uh, click on the empty space here click on the empty space here now if you are getting a different values that is fine because it is a random numbers so you will be getting a different value okay so once you do this control c on your keyboard control c on your keyboard and go to word file control v paste it as a picture here Okay, now we have to fill some questions here. I will leave that to you. Probability of choosing one person. How many? Probability. You have to answer this question. In addition to the questions mentioned in your assignment, two, four, less than two. Same goes here. Okay, now uh, remember I should have created a table for simulation probability, but that's okay. Now remember the values must be between 0 to 1. So you have to divide the whole, the values which you see here by 1000, or you can choose from here. I should have done this as simulation probability. Okay, so answer each and every question. So let me answer the first question. The probability of choosing one person, probability of choosing one person is 0 0.0107. How did I get the value? Look here. So if you can look at this picture, x value is 1, so probability of 1, that is 0 0.0107. If I ask you 2, probability of 2, x replace x with 2, so probability of 2 is what? 0 0.05. You have to take the corresponding value, okay? Likewise, answer the rest of the questions for method 1 and method 2. I need at least four, at least four decimal places.
done once you are done answering these questions you have to answer here also you can write it as 15 by 1000 if you do not want to convert that into decimal format always divide by 1000 here because total number is 1000 so total simulation thousand so divide each values with thousand you do not have to represent that in decimal you can leave it as a fraction that's okay So the values I'm getting and the values you will get will be different. Now, I have highlighted two things here for method one and two. I have highlighted two things. Okay, in method one, the value, the last value, and in method two, the last value. It has to be similar, not same, but similar. So in my case, it is less than two is 0 0.05 again. Okay, so here, when I come here, less than two is 0 0.041. Okay. So, it has to be similar. Mine is 0 0.05 and 0 0.04. Only a 0 0.01 difference. So, that is fine. So, you have to get something similar like this. Not similar value, but your similar values must be same. Do not compare with my values. Okay. Check whether you have got a same value or not. Oh, 